Brian Porter. We welcome to services this morning. Glad to see you at the house of the Lord. Uh, we pray you're having a wonderful Independence Day, and, uh, being July the 4th. We'll begin our service maybe a little differently. We uh, do appreciate all the freedoms we have as American citizens. In the beauty of the goodness, Christ was born across the sea. children's larger area and we have class for all ages of children and so just uh, continually pray in that area uh, just also remind you that we have the uh, youth night on uh, July 23rd from 6 to 8 p.m. here at the church that's from 10 and up to kids from 10 and up uh, for that youth night so let's pray together Gary Father Lord God now I pray that you'll take these few moments as we break thy word find the truth of that which you're doing in our lives and Lord that we'd understand uh, what you have laid out before us this day Lord help the word of God to speak to our soul Lord help us to know that everything you've done to bring us to this point and Lord as we look at these events of this morning as we've gathered together to pay tribute to our nation and to our freedoms and Lord to stand upon those and to take care of the responsibilities you've given us may we be the people you've called us to be now, I pray for each one that has come this morning. I pray their soul will hear from heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. As we've come to the 4th of July, we have a great uh, celebration. It's good for us to celebrate. Uh, you know, we speak much of our Independence Day and the freedoms we have and uh, the world and the environment that we're living in is such a changing place that it is very difficult uh, in many places of the world to understand what freedom really means. And even in America today, we have somewhat become cloudy about the definition and the working of what freedom means and, and what are we standing for when we're standing upon freedom. And in the Word of God, He even goes even farther than the physical freedom. He speaks about the spiritual freedom. And there we're going to look at this morning. We'll find our text over in John 8 this morning. And so if you have your Bible with you, uh, uh, pick it up and go to the Gospel of John, which is the fourth Gospel of the New Testament. And there you'll find Jesus' words as He speaks to this end of freedom. How do we understand it? What do we know the truth of this to be? It's more than just simply uh, doing uh, what we want or some celebration. Uh, there was uh, folks around my house last night and early this morning. They celebrated right on into the morning, blowing up those things and rattling the windows and said, hey, we're free. Uh, I'd like to take some of their freedoms away from them. But <laughs> they have their freedoms. And so uh, and I'm not sure not that they're, they're all legal what they do, but they, you know, they have their freedoms, and, and we as Christians understand we have uh, certain freedoms, and, and there are spiritual as well as the physical, and, and we understand these things, and many today will gather, and, and uh, uh, many will celebrate those, and, and I pray that uh, you have a safe one, and you're careful, and you're wise about the things that you do. Uh, but we'll be back in church tonight at 6 o'clock. For those of you that uh, are free, come on over here and we'll worship because we have a freedom of worship and we can worship even on the 4th of July. Many countries cannot do that. I get missionary letters, missionary emails, and missionary texts every week and, and people that are struggling because of the lack of freedom. Uh, and folks, we need to understand exactly what God's doing in our life. 
So my text at the beginning in verse 31 of John 8 this morning, uh, we'll see what Jesus says about this matter of freedom and what does it mean to us and what does it mean to our soul, our spirit, not only to our body, but what does it mean to our soul? Verse 31 says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I want you to note verse 32, because that's going to be our main uh, text focus this morning. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Then answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and we never be in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the Son abideth forever. If the Son therefore shall make ye, you free, ye shall be free indeed. And I hear Christ is speaking to these that believe, these Jews that have an understanding that He is the Christ, that He is the Savior, that He has come into this world to save them from their sin. And yet they struggle with what does this mean? Uh, they look at the physical and God's looking at the spiritual. And what does it mean to have true freedom of your soul? What does it mean to see what God is doing? Uh, freedom is not merely the absence of restraint, nor is it doing whatever you please. Freedom is a privilege and a power, but it's also a responsibility. And God there calls us uh, to understand exactly what He's doing and what He's bringing, how we have the potential to fulfill all that He is in our life. Uh, as that which uh, Miss Rhonda was singing about, that we have to see that God had a greater purpose than just simply what we've done in this life. Simply while we think that this thing's going to be working out, or the dark hours that you're living in right now, whatever struggle that you're in, uh, God has a way to make you free today. And that freedom comes by knowing Him and walking with Him and having that ability to understand what He's doing beyond the temporal moment, beyond the bondage that we have in this life. And here, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, He is working and showing us all that He is doing. That freedom that comes from Christ gives us the freedom from the law and from the bondage of the Old Testament. Uh, if you understand the text here, as Jesus is speaking to these Jews, uh, they were looking through the eyes of the law, and they had still tried to place themselves under that law. And God said, I've come to deliver you. I've come to free you from that law. Many today find themselves in bondage of sin, uh, not only sin that keeps us from the salvation of God, but sin that gives us those restrictions of life. And mankind needs to understand that God has come to set us free today. There's a higher, more purpose, better in this life than the things that this life has to offer us. We have freedom from our past. We're not who we were. When we meet Christ as our Savior, when we come to this point, of having our sins set free through the blood of Jesus Christ, when we claim the blood through the confession of our sin, God covers our past with His blood. He then frees us from that past, that freedom from material things. You know, you're not in bondage to these things of this life as these of the world, as they can only see what they have. We understand that life is greater than what we're living here. Life is greater than the uh, material gains or the possessions of this life. Life is greater than the powers that be in this life. Life is about what God is doing, how we're journeying with Him. And so these that have come to faith have
have come to this understanding and yet they struggle with that. And so on this Independence Day, when we speak about freedom, you know, many people speak about it's political freedom. And yet we find today that this political freedom that people are looking for just creates them one struggle after the next struggle. You're not going to find it in the politics. You're not going to find it in something that the politics are going to bring into your life uh, or the world as we look at, as you look at many of these oppressed countries. You know, they're trying to redefine freedom. But God said, here's what freedom really looks like. And here's what I have come to bring you. And here's what freedom is in your life. And you can have freedom in Christ Jesus. But in the world we live in, there's also a counterfeit to that. There is a deception where people think they're free when they're not free. Now, keep your thought in John 8, but I want you to go to 2 Peter chapter number 2. In 2 Peter, the epistle of 2 Peter, he discusses this with us in understanding that there is a false sense and there is a false belief and there is a false uh, teaching, and there are those of the apostate that are leading people away from the freedom that God is proclaiming in the truth of Jesus Christ. In the world we live in, uh, there are many today that are teaching things that are deceitful and dangerous and against the truth of God in your life. And folks... Uh, people today seem to or at least give you the appearance that they are ignorant of the devices that are around them. They claim themselves to be free when they're in bondage. And Christian, you need to understand the truth of God. There are people that are living in bondage and people that are trying to keep you in bondage and away from the truth. And wherever you find the truth of God, you're also going to find a lie that is out there. And you need to understand the difference. And you need to choose the truth over the lies. There are dangers out there that are trying to deceive you. Peter deals with this in the second chapter of 2 Peter. And we'll look at several verses here, but look at verse 7 and 8 to get us started here. And it says, And delivered just Lot, vexed with their filthy conversations of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Uh, I'm going to pick up verse 9 also one there. And the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Now, in context here, folks, you have to understand that if you're not sure who Lot is, you go back to the book of Genesis and you'll find Lot is the nephew of Abraham. And Lot separated himself off from Abraham because of a contention that had come between his herdsmen and his flockmen and Abraham's. And Lot went down and pitched his tent towards Sodom and Gomorrah. And then in the uh, context of time, Lot wound up down in Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lot wound up in the midst of that sin. And before God judged Sodom and Gomorrah, and you'll find that there where he brought down fire and destroyed it with uh, fire and brimstone, there at Sodom and Gomorrah, and before Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, Lot was brought out. Now, a lot of you will struggle in that context of the Old Testament in uh, finding this. It says, well, Lot was not a righteous man. He did many unrighteous things, but his soul was righteous. He said, well, I don't understand that. Well, there's the grace and the mercy of God. It, it goes beyond what we judge. We look at the outside, but God looketh upon the heart. Yeah, the old preachers used to say as I was coming up and, and learning and, and understanding the scriptures, you know, we're going to be surprised at who's not in heaven, but we're going to be more surprised by who is in heaven. And some of the times we come to those realities as we read the scripture and we look at that and we think, man, why would 
those things be? Because the spiritual is much greater than the physical. Right. And the things we know in this life and, and what we want to judge and discern and, and call out, God said there's a different measurement and you'll stand before the Almighty God and there's only one who decides. And that's Christ Jesus Himself. Let me back you up in verse 1 of 2 Peter chapter number 2 there and look at the context of that which he's doing. Well, I want to bring you to verse 19 first, and I guess I'll go back to verse 1. Hang on. Preacher will get there in a minute. Any of blessing this Rhonda? <laughs> Come on, brain function. <laughs> go, go. Verse 19. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome. Of the same is he that brought in bondage. Now here, God's telling us there are people that are trying to deceive you and to lead you astray. Now that's going to bring me to verse 1. Verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring you damnable heresies, even denying the Lord, that brought them and bring them bring upon themselves swift destruction, and many shall follow their uh, pernicity. Per Thank you. You take it anywhere you want it. <laughs> ways means their evil ways, mean their lying, deceitful ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Verse 3, and through covetousness shall they by feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now for the long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down into to hell, and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spare not the old world, but save Noah and the eighth, right, eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, and bringing the, in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, and condemned them, and to overthrow the making of them as an, an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. So he uh, explains to us here how these false prophets, these apostates, these teachers of deceit are bringing forth the lies uh, of freedom that is really not freedom. How that they're leading people away from what God is doing in their life. How that God is showing them of understanding exactly the dangers and the unlawfulness of these that are leading people away from the truth. Now they speak words and you would listen to them and you would say of them uh, that they have a knowledge of God and yet they deny the power thereof. They're losing that which God is doing in their life and they're allowing the, the, uh, lust, the, the lust of the flesh that are allowing the sin of the world uh, to rob them of the freedom that God has placed before them. They're choosing the false freedom and they choose to try to live the way that they want to live and they have found themselves responsible not a God. And God said they're going to be called into account. They're going to have to give an account for their sin because uh, they have not trusted in Christ. They have not brought themselves to understand the freedom that God has given them. Uh, you can go throughout the scripture, not only these that he names here in 2 Peter 2, but you'll find this was a, a, an event that has happened over and over again to mankind. Uh, think about then in the book of Luke, uh, the prodigal son. 
the prodigal son uh, wanted his freedom. He wanted all the things uh, that his father could give him. And he took them upon himself. He went out and lived riotously and lived away from the things that he knew was right. And he found himself in destruction. And he realized how much he had lost uh, because of these false ones that were out there. Because there is no true freedom without responsibility. There's no understanding of what we have without seeing what God's doing in our life. Remember, we've talked about it in the last couple sermons, but uh, Satan in the Garden of Eden, as he was speaking to Eve, and, and he was saying that you can disobey God and you can go against the Word of God and you can not... Uh, find yourself where God wants you to be and yet uh, these things won't happen unto you. It won't be as God said unto you. You won't have to pay that price and yet you find throughout mankind and throughout the history of man that this sin that Adam brought into the world has then brought forth death and, and did exactly what God said it would do. But Satan says go ahead disobey God. These things won't happen and yet we find ourselves accountable because they do happen exactly as God says they're going to happen. Not only in Lot's life, uh, not only in these that have forsaken, uh, they have found themselves uh, away from the blessings of God and found themselves in the judgment because they misused the freedom that was given to them. Uh, freedom is not to live as you please without accountability because that's sin. Freedom is the understanding of what God is doing in your life. Seeing the hand of God and the working of God. Not listening to the false, but understanding the truth. Uh, Romans 6 deals with it as he comes out of the justification of Romans 5 and dealing with sin. And then he talks to those that are in Christ now and, and have received Christ their Savior. He says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And he says what? God forbid. Romans 6, verse 1 and 2, study it out for yourself. He said, God forbid that we should continue in that sin because it brings forth the destruction and the judgment and we need to understand there's a consequence there. And no matter what people tell you, no matter what your flesh tells you, no matter what your mind wants, you need to understand that there is a responsibility and a consequence. There's a right way to live. Romans 6 and verse 23 tells us there, for the wages of sin is death. It's going to bring forth a just reward. Uh, Numbers chapter number 32 and verse 23 says, be sure your sins will find you out. And if you look throughout history, if you study these scriptures, Every person that has chose to go away from God has paid a price for it in this life and many will pay a price for it in eternity to come. Because as we read there in verse 9, God will bring forth the judgment there and there is a judgment. No matter what the lies are told in verse 19 of 2 Peter chapter number 2, those lies are going to be proven to be the lie that they are. We have to understand that our sins will find you out. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13 says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Here, God warns us that knowing and recognizing the truth, understanding exactly where we stand with God, understanding that true freedom comes from walking with God and knowing God and seeing God. It is a matter of searching your soul and taking part of the truth that God has placed in your life. No matter what demise comes of the flesh and, and what problems come in this earth, they, well, if I do right, it's going to cost me. My friend, if you do wrong, it's going to cost you more. Sin will grow and multiply in your life and it will bring destruction, not only in this life, but also for eternity. And there we need to find our relationship with God and understand the truth that there's only one way and that's God's way. There's only one freedom and that's found in the truth of God in your life. Allowing God to be your God. Seeing that God is the one that is working through these things. 
I'm bringing you to an understanding of what God is doing. Freeing you from the lies and the bondage of the lies that bring forth. Jesus told us that Satan is the father of all lies. He, he is the one that is propagating this. There is that prince in the power of the air that is at work today in this earth. And God takes the truth. And God takes that truth and makes you free. You must understand that there is the difference amongst us. And not everything that you hear in this lifetime is truth. Even those that want to name the name of God, many of those are not walking in the truth. Many will tell you that when you find the truth, you are misled. You're on the wrong road. You're, you're too narrow. You're, you don't have to be that fundamental. You don't have to be that direct. You don't have to be the... You have to be politically correct. My friend, God was never politically correct. And God's not politically correct today. God calls sin, sin. And when people choose to go away from God and deny the power of God and deny the truth of God, then they're going to stand against God. So God said that truth is the one that allows you to see and to know the freedom, to understand that that is where we find the direction, that's where we find the guidance, that's where we find the power, that's where we find the victory, is in that which God has laid out for us. That's why Jesus said, I am the truth. John chapter 14. He declares that. He is the only truth. John 17 and 17, Jesus said, Thy word, God's word, is truth. And Jesus is the word of God. He, he is the word in the flesh. He brings forth that. First John 5 says the spirit is truth. And Jesus said that when he left, he would send the comforter and the Holy Spirit of God would bring forth that truth. We have all we need in God. But in knowing that, friend, you have to rely on on God. You have to step out by faith. You have to trust God that He's bringing forth these truths in your life. No matter what you're being told, no matter how many is against you, no matter what the circumstances of life are, you can know the truth in God. And the deeper your relationship with God, the more you see the love and the truth of God in your life. The more you understand the working of God. If you, remember, if you recall back in John chapter number 8 where we were reading there this morning, in verse 32, it says that you can know. Now that's not just an intellectual knowledge. That's a heart knowledge. That's a understanding of trust. That is a deep, loving relationship with God. And the closer you walk with God, the more you know the more you understand that that personal relationship, that love of God is overcoming the sin of the world. Not only your sin personally, but the sin of the world. And there we find that freedom. There we find that knowledge. And that's where true independence, true freedom comes from today is that relationship with God and taking the responsibility that God has placed within us by giving us the truth, allowing us to see the truth, know the truth, and walk in the truth. Back in John chapter 8 again, verse 31, he prefaces the verse there that there is truly where we understand what God is doing because Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are ye to my disciples indeed. Here, not only does the truth set us free, but the truth enables us, empowers us, envisions us to be able to walk in that truth. And it shows forth the right way. And we walk in the light as He is in the light. We know the truth of God and we follow His commandments. Uh, John chapter 14 and 15 says, If you love me, Keep my commandments, Jesus said. If you love me, if you have that deep relationship, if you have that knowledge of God, God has infiltrated your heart and your life, it has changed who you are, then you will keep the commandments of God. 
Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? There's some very difficult questions that we come to as human beings as we begin to sort this matter out because there is truth and that truth brings forth freedom and that freedom allows us to walk in the power of God and there is a lie and that lie is to deceive and that lie is to be misled and that lie is by the apostate and by the false teachers and by those that deny the truth and they are led many astray and the wickedness of this world has caused people to be in bondage and they have lost sight of the freedom that God intends to bring in their life. Do you know true freedom today? Do you understand what Jesus was speaking of there in John chapter number 8 as He looked to the cross of Calvary, as He understood the commandments and the truth of God in our life? It is the truth that brings forth freedom. It is the truth that allows us to see what Christ is doing in our life. It's not buying into the laws of this world. And we're, we're watching this generation that we're now living in literally destroying itself. And, and if you understand Bible prophecy today and you're looking for Jesus Christ to come, you know it's coming. He's coming today because of what's been cost and what's being done upon this earth. Jesus taught us that as it is in the days of, the, of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. We're right there at that point where the wickedness of this earth was just as grave as it was before the flood and before the outpouring of God's judgment upon mankind where only eight souls were saved off this earth because of the great sin and the destruction, the wickedness that was amongst them at that time before the, uh, the, 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 the flood days, there was nothing but evil filling this earth. And folks, today, evil fills this earth. Evil is amongst us. And we must recognize the difference between the evil and the truth. And Jesus said, I am truth. There's where you find that relationship. There's where you find that freedom. There's where you find your way down through this life. There's only one that can lead you into the ways of God. And that is Jesus Christ Himself. Amen. Here in John chapter number 8 and verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. It, it, it's not just the outward. It's not just a deliverance from a moment of life. It's not that God comes into your life and puts a band-aid upon it and fixes something that you just think, well, there's nothing worse could happen. <laughs> In this life, it changes constantly. But in the time to come, when you stand before the eternal God, if your name is not written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're going to go into a place called hell where there is no freedom at all. That place that is eternal damnation. That place that Jesus Christ said there will be no deliverance from. There's where he says, you shall be free indeed. Not only through this life, not only will you find direction. Listen to me. You can have victory over whatever is going on in your world today. Jesus Christ can lead you into the way of righteousness. He can give you victory over those sins of the mind and the flesh and the, and the lust thereof and the pride of life. He can change you into the person that you need to be in this life. But friend, that's not the greatest freedom of all. Those, those are wonderful things and, and they're great to live in and, and they're great to have and, and to walk with God and to live in His power is the best life this life has to offer. But there's more to be concerned about than this life. There's more to be concerned about than this mountain, than, than this valley that you're in, than this troublesome time that you're in. 
It's about knowing the commands of God and living out those commands of God to see the victory, but also to understand that as this victory leads to eternal victory, those things that God's doing, those things of understanding the ways of Christ in your life, to know His love and to walk in His love, to see the freedom that He gives us, to understand that He puts us into a place where we can walk in that today, that our soul can be free today, that our soul will stand before Him in all of eternity and know Him as He is because of what Jesus Christ has done for your soul today. That's true freedom. That's the freedom that the Scriptures are speaking about today. That's where we look for our independence. That's where we find the things that this life cannot give us. Nor anything that we do in this life or any relationship that we have in this life. It is about that relationship that we have with God. That we have through Jesus Christ as our Savior. Do you truly know freedom today? Are you truly set free in Christ Jesus? Have you applied the blood of Christ to your sin? Have you confessed your sins and asked Him to forgive you of your sin? There, my friend, is the freedom that Christ is speaking of. When you know the truth and obey the truth, you shall be free indeed. <laughs> There's where God's speaking to you at today. Are you free in Christ Jesus? That's true independence. That's what the scriptures are telling us today. I am the truth, Jesus said. He is the only way. Lord, I pray for these souls that stand as they so respectably have listened to your word today. As they found themselves in the midst of life, in the business thereof, burdened down with the responsibility, looking for freedom, trying to solve the problems of life. And yet, they have a longing and an emptiness within their soul. Lord, I pray they'll see the freedom that you offer them through your precious Son. I pray that they will come and call upon you. Seek your face. Apply the blood of Christ and find the deliverance, the victory, the freedom that you desire to give them this day. Here, I'll leave you with this verse found out of uh, Luke chapter number 6 and 46. I referred to it a couple times during the message, but listen to it. Why call me, why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Amen. <clears throat> Something we need to examine in our own life. Yeah. Okay. Whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, whether you truly walk in the truth or you deny the truth. Jesus is going to call you into account. Amen. Not trying to scare you, just trying to warn you. We can help you. The church is always here for you. Be here tonight, 6 o'clock, for evening service. Wednesday night, 7 p.m., for our midweek service, a Bible study prayer time. Uh, Lord, we'd like for you to come out and be part of all the services. Uh, we can do anything for you. Don't hesitate. Call, text, email, Facebook. We've got it all out there somewhere. You contact us, we'll be glad to uh, spend some time with you. Uh, let God work through us and we'll allow the things of God to be seen in this place. We're grateful for you come by this way. Pray to have a safe, glorious holiday today. Enjoy the things of the blessings of God that's upon your soul and your life.